Hi everybody, this is Algebra 2 Lesson 4 and this lesson covers the distributive property, solutions of equations, and change side, change signs. Okay, distributive property. Distributive property means that we can multiply things in any order when we have um, those, when we have parentheses. So, for example, if we had 3 times 2 plus 1, we could add our 2 plus 1 first, or we could multiply first. If we multiply first, we're going to say 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 1 is 3, and we're going to get 6 plus 3 is 9. If we did it the other way, we added those first 2 and 1, we would get 3 times 3, and that's going to equal 9. Right? So that's the distributive property. We can do it in either order. That helps us when we have variables, um, because we can't actually solve the part that's in the middle but we can expand. So it expand, it's, we've learned, we learned this last year, um, it's our rainbow, right? So we're just gonna multiply here to here. So we gotta multiply the top right here times the top of that. So four times, there's no other numbers, so that's just gonna be a four. And then we've got a squared and b negative two. And we're just gonna leave that. And then we have to multiply our bottom there times there, so b times a to the fourth, so that'd be a to the fourth b, okay? And then we are going to do that again, but times our other term, right? So three times four would be 12. And then we've got a squared and another a. Now remember, if we multiply a squared times another a, right? That a is worth one. We add those exponents, so that'd be a to the third. Right, so we've got a to the third, because here's two a's, and here's one more a, and then we have a b. Okay, and then we're going to go right here, so that'll be a squared b. Okay, now we can simplify some of this. Remember, when we have exponents and we are dividing them, we just subtract. So, to simplify this, I'm going to put my 4 here, and then I'm going to say, here are two a's up here and four down here. So if I bring those that two down and make it negative two, right? So that means a times a, right? Two a's on the top and then four on the bottom. One, two, three, four. These are going to cancel each other and I'm just going to be left with a squared on the bottom. Okay, this b is negative so we definitely want to bring it down. So that would be one plus two would be b to the third, all right, minus uh, let's see, this one is a to the third over a squared, so that would mean three a's on the top and two on the bottom, right, these are going to cancel and we're just going to be left with one a on the top, okay, and then we've got a b and a b, those cancel each other. That's pretty much all of that. Um, you could write it without the fraction bar. So you could just write it as, okay? It would also be right if you move those to the top and you wrote 4a negative squared, b to the negative third, minus 12a. That would also mean the exact same thing, okay? So when I check your papers, I'm gonna look at them really carefully and make sure that whatever you write doesn't mean the same thing as the answer if it looks different than the answer. Well, than the answer key. Okay, this one we're going to expand by rainbowing this. So we're going to rainbow this top. Um, this is negative 3 and positive 2. Remember, we're adding those exponents. So we're going to have a, and if we've got negative 3 and positive 2, that'd be to the negative 1. Now our b, we have a 0 plus 1, that's just going to leave 1b. And then our c, we don't have any c's to put together with that. So that's our top. And then our bottom, we've got, remember, if it doesn't have a sign, that means it's 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay. Then we're going to subtract, and we're going to rainbow here. Uh, we don't have anything to multiply that number by, so we're just going to write the 3. All right, so this is a negative 3 and negative 2, so that would be a negative 5. And then our b is 0, so we're just going to leave it off. We're going to get rid of that. 
All right, now we're going to go to the bottom, and we're going to have B negative 2C. We can't combine those. All right, now we're going to fix these so that we don't have all these negative exponents. So we're going to move that one to the bottom. So we're going to have an A on the bottom. Our B doesn't have anything to combine with, we'll leave it on the top. Now our C, we have 1C over C to the third, that'd be 1, 2, 3. If we cancel those, we end up with C squared on the bottom and nothing on the top. All right, over here, our 3 is going to stay on the top. Um, our A is going to have to move to the bottom, so that'd be A to the fifth on the bottom. Our B is going to have to move to the top, so that would be B squared up here. And then our C just stays where it is. Let me double check that, make sure I did it right. So I have B, A, C squared, 3, negative fifth, B, and C. Yep, okay. The way they wrote it in the book, they've got A, negative 1, B over C squared minus 3A negative 5 over CB negative squared. Either of these answers is correct. They mean the exact same thing. Okay, It's just different ways of writing it. Moving those exponents up or down isn't going to make any difference in what it actually means, the value of the expression. It still has the same value. All right, addition rule for equations. Same quantity can be added to both sides of an equation without changing the solution side of the equations. And the multiplication and division rule um, says every, time, every term on both sides of an equation can be multiplied or divided by the same non-zero quantity without changing the solution set of the equations. Okay, an example of this. So our addition one. If we had x plus 3 equals 5, we can do minus 3 minus 3. Right? Cancel those, and we're going to get x equals 5 minus 3 is 2. Right, So that's how we solve using the addition rule. Um, if we had x minus 2 equals 10, we could do plus 2 plus 2. As long as we do the same thing on both sides of the equation, it's not cha changing the value. x equals 12. All right, our multiplication division rule. So if we had 3, uh, actually if we had, let's see. If we had x divided by 2 equals 10, we could do times 2 and times 2. So we multiplied both sides times the same number, and we're going to get x equals 20. Okay? As long as we do it to both sides of the equation, then it still is equal. Um, division, if we had 3x equals 12, we could do divided by 3 and divided by 3, and we're going to get x equals 4. Okay? So that's how you use the multiplication and division or addition subtraction rules. All right, so the steps, this should be a review. We learned this last year. There are five steps for solving basic equations. First, you're going to eliminate the parentheses. Then you're going to add like terms on both sides. Then you're going to eliminate the variable on one side or the other. It doesn't matter which side. Then you're going to eliminate the constant. Okay, so your variable is going to be something like your x, your y, your z. Okay, your constant is going to be um, a number with no x, y, or z, okay? Then you're going to eliminate the coefficient. The coefficient is whatever number x is multiplied by. Like if you had 3x, the, the number part, that's your coefficient. All right, so let's try to apply these rules. All right, so first rule is going to be eliminate parentheses. So first, I am going to distribute this negative sign into this parenthesis right here. So I'm just going to bring my 12 down, and then I'm going to make that be negative 2x, negative 5. Okay, bring down my negative 2, and then distributing that plus isn't going to make much of a difference. It's just going to be plus x and minus 3. All right, next one is going to be combine like terms on either side of the equal sign. So... Uh, here I have a 2x. There aren't any other 2x's, so I'll just write that. But then I have 12 minus 5. Those are both constants. They're like terms. I can put them together. So my 12 and my minus 5. 12 minus 5 would be 7, a positive 7. Okay, then my equal sign. 
Then I can combine on this side. So I've got a negative 2 and a negative 3, which would be a negative 5. And then I've got an x. Okay, next one is to eliminate the variable on one side or the other. To do that, if I've got a positive x here, I can put a negative x there and a negative x there. Okay, these are going to cancel each other. And I'll have negative 3x plus 7 equals negative 5. Now i got to eliminate my constant on the side with the variable. Okay, So that means get rid of this, this 7 by adding the opposite of it. right? So it's plus 7. The opposite of that is subtract 7. And I get negative 3x equals, uh, that would be negative 12. Now it says eliminate co the coefficient. My coefficient is this negative 3, whatever is being multiplied by my variable. So I'm going to divide by negative 3 on both sides, and I'm going to get x equals 4. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Those negatives cancel. All right, so that's how you solve a basic equation. Hopefully you did that last year a bunch in Algebra 2. All right, this one wants us to solve for x. So first we've got to eliminate these parentheses. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that 3 over 1. Um, and then I'm going to multiply out like this. So I'm going to say 3 times 5 is 15. And 1 times 6 would be 6. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply here. So 3 times 5 is 15. And 1 times 3 is 3. And that's multiplied by x equals. Now I'm going to do this. So now I have a negative times a negative will make a positive 1 half. Okay. And then a negative and a positive, that makes that be negative x. All right, now I have to, I don't have any like terms to combine. So i got to get my variables on the same side. So I'm going to do plus 15 over 3x. Ooh, and 15 over 3 is actually 5. 15 over 3, 15 divided by 3 is 5. And so I could do plus 5x right here. That's going to get rid of those. So now I have 15 over 6 equals 1 half. And then I have 5x minus 1x would be plus 4x. Now 15 over 6, I could do 3 times 5 and 3 times 2. That would be 5 over 2. I'm going to rewrite that as 5 over 2. Okay, now I need to get rid of this constant right here, so minus 1 half. Those will cancel. 5 minus 1 would be 4 over 2. And 4 over 2 is the same thing as 2, so I'm going to rewrite that as a 2. And there's my 4x is still left over here. Now just divide by 4. And x is going to be equal to 2 over 4, or 1 half. Let me make sure I did that right. Because these can be confusing. Yep, x equals 1 half. All right, let's try another one. Okay, so on this one, they want you to do the change sides, change signs. So that means instead of writing minus 2, minus 2, or plus 2, plus 2, right, we're going to remember the rule of if you change sides of the equal sign, you change signs. So we're going to cross this out, and we're going to write positive 2, because we just moved it to the other side of the equal sign, so we changed the sign. So that would mean x equals 7 plus 2, 9. Super easy. All right, if we're solving for p, that means we need to move this and this to the other side of the equal sign. So we can write p equals, if we move this, we have to change its sign, right, to a plus 3x, right, so we'd have a plus 3x. And if we move this, we change its sign to a minus 4. And then we leave that positive 7y there. Okay? Easy peasy. We just move those to the other side. All right, solve for y on this one. So first we're going to need to move this one, and we're going to move this one. Okay? So we're going to have 3y equals, uh, just change the sign, to x minus 5, 
And if we're solving for y, that means we're going to divide everything by 3. So we're going to get y equals 2 over 3x minus 5 over 3. And that's how you do that one. All right, so hopefully these were just kind of review for you. Go ahead and pause the video and work those practice problems. All right, I did not type these out because they are difficult to set up. So I'm just going to write it. So first we've got a, and we've got 2a to the negative fourth, b to the zero over c, and then we've got a big parentheses, and then we've got 2ab squared c over x squared, and a minus sign, a negative 2 over b negative 4. Okay, so we're just rainbowing this. Alright, so first we're going to multiply our numbers. So we've got 2 times 2 would be 4. Alright, then we got to add our exponents. So for a's, we got a negative 4, and this would be really positive 1. So that would be a negative 3. And then our b's, we have 0 and 2, so that would be b squared, and then our c's, we don't have any other c's. That's it for our top. Now we're going to do our bottom. None of those are like, so it's just going to be cx squared. Okay, and then we're going to put our minus sign. Now we're going to multiply here. No number to multiply our 2 by, so we'll just leave it as a 2. Our a, we have negative 4 and negative 2, so that's going to be a negative 6. Um, the b is just is, is 0. So we can just get rid of it. All right. And then C and B. So we'd have B negative 4. C. Nothing to combine on those. All right. Now we got to look at these ones that are stacked on each other. All right. So this, for this first one, we'll bring down our 4. All right. So this negative 3, we could leave that. We need to combine this C and this B. Actually, those are just going to cancel each other. A to the negative third. B squared x squared, okay, and then this one just stays the same, a to the negative 6, b to the negative 4th, c. Now, if we wanted to make all these positive, right, we could move this x up, let's see, so we would move the a down to the bottom, and then we would move the x to the top, so we'd have the b on the top and the x on the top. And then we would have to move that a to the bottom, so a to the 6. And then our b would be moved to the top, and our c would stay on the bottom. And that's the answer that they have in the back of the book. All right, and there is one more. Okay, so this one wants us to solve. We've got 2, 1 8 minus 3 over 2x equals negative, negative 1 fourth x plus 2. Don't check that. 2, 1 8, 3 over 2. Okay, so first we're going to do our um, distributive, get rid of our parentheses. So we're going to put that over 1, and then we're going to say that would be 2 over 8. And then we're going to multiply here, so 2 times 3 would be 6 over 2x. Okay, and then we're just going to distribute here, so that means just change that sign, so that would be a positive 1 fourth x. And then that would make that be a negative 2. Okay, so these, I can reduce these fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That would be 1 fourth. 6 divided by 2 would be 3x. 1 fourth x minus 2. All right, now I have to put my x's together. So I'm going to subtract 1 fourth x on both sides for this one. 
So that would mean that I would have negative 3 and 1 fourth x right there. I still have 1 fourth on this side equals negative 2. So now I need to subtract 1 fourth over here. And I'm going to have 3 and 1 fourth x minus 2 and 1 fourth. So I'm going to rewrite that. Um, I'm going to change these into improper fractions. So that'll be 13 over 4x, 9 over 4. All right, now when you want to divide by um, a fraction, you just flip and multiply. So 4 over 13. Got those split somehow. Let's see. 12, 13 over 4. Um, and then those all cancel out, and we get 9 over 13. And that's the answer. Negative 9 over 13 is the answer to that one. Alright, that's the end of that video.